Hello everybody. Today it is my first lecture of the module 6. In module 6, I will basically discuss the force vibration analysis of the beam. Specially, I will consider the Euler Bernoulli beam. Now, Euler Bernoulli beam can be taken as a very useful model in various engineering applications. The one vivid example is the bridge girder and many research has been conducted on the basis of idealization of bridge as a Euler Bernoulli beam because behavior of bridge girder almost resemble the behavior of Euler Bernoulli beam. Now in that connection I will discuss how the a general formulation of force vibration problem of Euler Bernoulli beam can be derived and after this we will see some application one by one. So today our focus will be to derive a general expression for the force vibration response of the Euler Bernoulli beam and then take up some examples for particular case to derive the expressions and also to perform numerical calculations in some of the problems. Okay. Outlines of the lecture will be general formulation of the response of simply supported beam subjected to given excitation and with initial conditions. Then I will give examples of simply supported beam subjected to harmonic excitation at certain point. Other numerical examples I will also take up. Now although it is uh, targeted as a simply supported beam, but this formulation holds good for other types of boundary conditions also. Once the mode shapes and frequencies, natural frequencies of the beam with other boundary conditions are known, the same formulation can be used with change of this frequency parameter and mode shape. Because in this uh, analysis, we will use the principle of mode superposition. So therefore, first requirement is to know the natural frequencies and mode shapes of the beam with simply supported condition or any other boundary conditions that I have covered in fifth module. Okay. So let us see. So we have in our hand the differential equation of motion as EI del 4y by del x4 plus C del y by del t plus m del square y by del t square equal to fxt. Now here fxt is the external force, external force and it is distributed in the space domain x. Now m is the mass per unit length of the beam, c is the damping coefficient of the beam per unit length and ei is the flexile rigidity. In this case we are taking the beam of uniform cross section throughout the length. Y is the response of the beam at any location x at any time instant t. So according to mode superposition principle, one can write y x t is equal to summation of phi i x eta i t where eta i t is the generalized coordinate and phi i x is the mode shape at the ith natural frequency. So eta is also generalized coordinate corresponding to ith mode. So if I sum up the product of mode shape function and the generalized time dependent coordinate, then I will get the uh, response at the time instant t at location x. That means the response is built up with the summation of the product of mode shape function and generalized coordinate. So if you expand this, you can see this, this phi 1 x eta 1 t plus phi 2 x eta 2 t plus phi 3 x eta 3 t like that it will continue. And interestingly you will note that in some cases the odd number of terms only will contribute and the even number of terms will have no contribution if the location is such that at this point the 
node is uh, situated in the mode shape function. So therefore, sometimes the odd number of terms can also be only be necessary and the even number of terms can be neglected. Okay. Now this series is substituted in this equation. So after substituting this series in this equation, we can write this EI. Then if I substitute this, it will be summation I is equal to 1 to infinity. Then D4 phi I dx4 eta it plus c eta it dot because we are taking time derivative and phi i x plus m again we are taking double derivative so eta i double dot t into phi i x and in the right hand side f x t is there. So that we can see after substituting this series here in this equation we are getting now this expression. Now from the free vibration analysis we know that a relationship exists at any mode del to the power 4 phi i e i the uh, multiplier will be there for constant cross section equal to m omega square phi so phi i so that can be utilized here and we utilize here this equation and also we assume that the damping is proportional to the mass so we assume that c by m ratio is 2 i j i uh, m omega i where omega i is the natural frequency in the ith mode so this is one as requirement and another requirement is this and the third requirement is the orthogonality relationship so that integral is required and the value of integral is a Kronecker delta whose meaning is when i is equal to j it is 1 otherwise it is 0 and this is because the mode shapes are normalized with respect to mass if this strategy is adopted for normalization of mode shape then the integral becomes 1 when i is equal to j that means if it is such that m phi i square x this integral will be 1 in the domain of the beam so using this thing that means after substituting the series we get this equation then multiply both sides of the equation by another mode phi j so that means here i will multiply this the above equation that i am showing here the above equation is multiplied by another mode shape function so e i summation i is equal to 1 to infinity and then for each term i will attach phi j And like that I will write that C and C I will write now dot and phi i x phi j x phi j x plus m eta i double dot t phi i x into phi j x. and the right hand side it will remain fxt into phi jx because we are multiplying both sides by another mode phi jx. Now you can integrate in the domain of the beam this expression and utilize this ei d4 phi i dx4 so you will get here m omega square phi i phi j so m phi i phi j that you can see that relationship will exist only when i is equal to j so therefore in the summation process many terms will be cancelled because of this orthogonality condition 
only one term will remain when i is equal to j. So therefore, in this process, using this relationship, mass proportional damping, and also the uh, the free vibration relationship, e i del four phi i by del x four equal to m omega square phi i. How this relationship is coming? This relationship is coming on the assumption that free vibration is harmonic. So therefore, when I take the second derivative of this harmonic function, omega square term will come. If the harmonic function is uh, with the frequency omega, then this omega square term will come. So as a result of this, we are getting these uh, terms and we can utilize this here and after integration using the orthogonality condition of the modes, we now get a very simple equation eta i double dot t plus 2 xi i omega i eta dot t plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t where q i t is the generalized force. You can understand that the right hand side was not changed because orthogonality relation uh, shape that we will use will not affect the right hand side of this equation. Okay. So, therefore, right hand side is nothing but the integration of this fxt uh, phi j or phi i is same. So, dx and this is nothing but your q i t because you are integrating this is a definite integral and you are integrating with respect to x and putting the limit 0 and L, 0 to L. So, therefore, it will remain as a time function. So, therefore, this equation is similar to single degree freedom dam system subjected to external disturbance, external force QIT and I is equal to 1, 2, etc. So, this is independent equation we are obtained and in the form of decoupled uh, second order ordinary differential equation. So, solution of this equation is well known to us and we now get the solution as eta i t e to the power minus omega i j i t bracket a i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t plus integration 0 to t h t minus tau into q i tau d tau. You can recognize this that this part is due to contribution of the external force. So, this is what is particular integral p i particular integral and this is your homogeneous solution of the differential equation. This is homogeneous part homogeneous part of the solution. So, differential equation that we get eta i double dot of course, it is a function of t 2 i j i eta i dot t and omega i will be there plus omega i square eta i t is equal to q i t. So, this differential equation you can see it is a non-homogeneous second order ordinary differential equation. So, by the theory of differential equation we get the general solution as the sum of the homogeneous part and particular integral. Now, for any arbitrary forcing function f x t we now write the particular integral using the Duhamel's or convolution integral as 0 to t integration 0 to t h t minus tau q i tau into d tau where h t is the impulse response function so impulse response function is a very important function you can call it in time domain analysis and it is used to solve the force vibration problem for any arbitrary type of excitation. Now, you can see that impulse response function gives the response of a single degree freedom system subjected to unit impulse, but no external force. So, unit impulse acts for a short duration time, very short duration time and within the short duration time, 
the initial conditions of this single degree freedom system is assumed as displacement to be 0 and the velocity is 1 by m. Okay. So, based on that the impulse assessment function as the solution of single degree freedom system subjected to initial condition displacement 0 and velocity 1 by m is obtained as e to the power j i i omega i t where this you can also index as i corresponding to ith mode because natural frequencies are different in different modes. So, e to the power minus j i i omega i t into sin omega d i t divided by because we are uh, taking mass after normalization procedure mass is 1. So, therefore, we are taking this omega d i. Okay. So, here you can see um, d i is nothing but damped natural frequency damped natural frequency of the beam at the ith mode and it is nothing but omega i is the undamped natural frequency into root over 1 minus j i i square where j i i is the model damping ratio. So, with this knowledge now we can calculate the force vibration part that is the particular integral and then the full expression for generalized coordinate is obtained as a function of time. So, the actual response is now at any location y x t is equal to summation of phi i x eta i t and you can take the summation of infinite number of modes. Actually, infinite number of modes is only theoretical thing in practical computation you have to truncate the modes. So, say 5, 10, 20 whatever may be. So, this is the response of the beam. Once you get this then this is the response of the beam, but thing is that in this expression you will see the mode shape function is known to us whereas this homogeneous solution contains two unknown constants a i and b i. So, these constants are to be evaluated by applying the initial conditions. However, while applying the initial condition caution has to be exercised that initial condition has to be applied only on the actual expression of the displacement that initial condition will be given at at t is equal to 0 say as a function of f x t is 0 here. Similarly, velocity at x 0 may be given as a function of x ok g x. So, therefore, the initial condition that we will get is not a discrete quantity, it will be distributed in the space and therefore, we have to use again some procedure to extract the coefficient a i and b i. Okay. Now, we will discuss this with the example of a uh, simply supported beam which is acted upon by a harmonic force f naught sin omega t. Here the force amplitude is instead of f naught I have taken I have denoted by p. So, p sin omega t and this frequency of the driving force is taken as capital omega. So, here in this figure you can see the p is the magnitude of the magnitude of the driving force. driving force and capital omega is the driving frequency driving free it is different from the natural frequency but when the driving frequency very close to the natural frequency in a damp system of course uh, the resonance will not occur at exactly at the driving frequency being coinciding with this natural frequency but driving frequency and natural frequency bears a sum ratio that is also approximately equal to 1 because of small damping. Now, here we assume that the force pulsating force is applied at the center of the beam. So, it is L by 2 from the left hand support. Now, the 
response of the beam is given as y x t equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to infinity phi i x eta i t. So, that is our response that is built up with the summation of the product of mode shape and generalized coordinates that is what is mode summation principle ok. Now, mode shape we have to know and natural frequency we also required to know. So, mode shape for simply supported beam if the function is normalized with respect to mass then we are getting root over 2 by ml sin i pi x that means if our solution if I show you the original solution is say ai sin i pi x by l that is the mode shape solution but the constant ai is arbitrary which is found after normalizing the mode shape with respect to mass that means we take this m into phi square i x integration 0 to l equal to 1 and in that process e i becomes root over 2 by m l. So, therefore, coefficient of mode shape function there is the amplitude here is root 2 by m l when the mass normalized procedure is adopted. So, therefore, we are writing phi i x is equal to root over 2 by m l sin i pi x by l, but in some books or some reference you will get the a i is taken as simply 1. So, in that case the coefficient root 2 m l will not appear in the expression ok. Now, here you see eta i t the response of the generalized coordinate is now given as e to the power minus omega i j i t bracket a i cos omega d i t plus b i uh, b i is a constant of integration uh, it will also vary from mode to mode and sin omega d i t omega d i is again the damped natural frequency and this is the Duhamel integral ok. Now, we got this expression so now we write the full expression whereas first let us calculate the generalized force. So, generalized force at the ith mode q i t equal to we are actually assuming that f naught we are denoting the magnitude as f naught as p. So, let us write instead of f naught as p is the magnitude. So, sin omega t is the harmonic function that in this simply supported beam at the midpoint l by 2 a harmonic force sin omega t is applied whereas the length of the beam is L ok. So, therefore, the forcing function f x t now can be represented by a direct delta function knowing its location. Its location is at L by 2. So, direct delta x minus L by 2. So, this function when used for integration now uh, this uh, generalized force is obtained as f x t into this phi i x d x. So, this is q i and you can see that q i now the constant term here some constant term is there. So, this is one constant term and p is also constant term. So, therefore, this p if I take inside the root root sign then it is 2 p square divided by m l sin i pi by 2. How it is sin i pi by 2? Because if I use the property of the direct delta function then the integration will be reduced to phi i l by 2 ok and other quantity will be there p sin omega t. So, now we can write the integration q i s and phi i is root 2 by m l and sin i pi by 2 ok. So, bringing this inside this square, uh, square root term we now get this generalized force as 2 p square by m l sin 
i pi by 2 of course this function is also there so sin omega t now you can see this is constant term and this is a time function so therefore we are getting again a harmonic force that is applied with constant which is different from the original force so this is root p square by ml into sin i pi by 2 sin omega t okay so let us write this uh, eta i t so eta i t is e to the power i minus j i i omega i t into f i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t plus 2 root over 2 p square by ml sin i pi by 2 divided by omega i square into because you can see the forcing function is harmonic so we can easily get the response of the steady state part so response of the steady state part is this is the amplitude and uh, this is the factor which will magnify the amplitude based on the frequency ratio so it is 1 divided by root over 1 minus r i square whole square plus 2 bracket 2 j i i r i whole square remember that r i is the damping ratio so this ratio is the ratio of the driving frequency to the natural frequency of the beam at the ith mode so this is what is r i now for resonance to occur at the particular mode we require that uh, this uh, r i is not exactly 1 so in that case you will get the resonance frequency you will get uh, it is the driving frequency at which resonance occur you will get omega i root over 1 minus 2 j i i square so this is the resonance frequency at which uh, the amplitude becomes very high but because of damping the amplitude will be limited you may rec recall this uh, frequency response curve so this is the frequency ratio r and this is the amplitude you will get that the curve is such type and for uh, zero damping case this is unbounded and because of damping the peak is bounded so as you increase the damping the peak will be shifting towards the left and you will get like that with the increase of damping the peak will shift towards the left ok so that is for example j is equal to 0 and here j is some finite number j1 uh, j2 that means uh, j3 etc so this graph is obtained and you can see the peak of the resonance peak of the resonance that occurs at frequency ratio r is nothing but capital omega by small omega i and it is nothing but 1 minus 2 j i i square ok so that should be remembered actually it is not exactly but if it is undamped system then the resonance will occur exactly at the natural frequency so this is what is steady state part i encircle this very important part which is called steady state and this is what is transient part now you can see the steady state part is also a harmonic function steady state part is also a harmonic function so here you can see that uh, this harmonic function is again this uh, contains this phase angle so phase angle is the important feature of the damped system and this is given as 10 theta i equal to 2 j i into r i divided by 1 minus r i square so this is what is known as phase angle okay so that you should know okay 
and if the damping is absent then phase angle is zero so undamped response we get simply the the time function part of the steady state response is sin omega t and since it is a linear system so steady state part the driving frequency is reflected in the time function okay this is the tangent part and it will die out with time because you can see a decaying factor is associated so decaying factor is e to the power minus j omega i t so this decaying factor is responsible for uh, gradually vanishing this uh, tangent part and ultimately the response will be containing only the steady state part at t which is far away from the initial time and it depends on the damping value also if damping is low then tangent part will exist for long time and steady state part will appear or it will be seen in the later part late it will be seen in the late of the response history but if the damping is high then the tangent part will decay fast and you will observe the steady state part in the response history okay so displacement at any time instant t at location x is now written as a full expression okay so this is the normalized value of the mode shape function that i have taken inside the summation term into uh, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity e to the power minus j i omega i t bracket a i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t bracket closed into m i sin omega i t plus theta i into sin i pi x by l now m i i have written so that the earlier expression here the coefficient or the constant term associated with the time function of the steady state part is very long so that expression is written here and it is assumed as a variable m i because it is also different in different mode because of different natural frequencies involved so here m i the constant m i will be root over 2 p square divided by m l sin i pi by 2 divided by omega i square into this is the magnification factor 1 divided by root over 1 minus r i square into whole square plus 2 j i i r i whole square. So now we can write this uh, in the compact form or uh, in the short form so that calculation will be easier. So y x t is now written as summation of this uh, first part is the homogeneous part that is the free vibration solution and second part is the, the steady state part. Okay. M i contains the magnitude of the force, natural frequency and uh, other variables say uh, this uh, sign of i pi by 2, frequency ratio, damping factor all are involved in the expression of M i. Okay. Now sin omega t plus phi o, theta o i, theta i is the phase angle that is very important part because of the presence of damping. So theta i is the phase angle. and it is nothing but 10 theta i is equal to 2 i j i i omega i or instead of uh, this omega i we are assuming this ratio frequency ratio r i 1 minus r i square okay so uh, the complete response is now written like that and uh, after differentiating this expression y x t with respect to time let us differentiate with respect to time then we will get the velocity so velocity is y dot x t equal to root over 2 by ml summation summation will contain the terms i is equal to 1 to infinity theoretically okay so into minus j i i omega i e to the power minus j i i omega i t into a i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t plus e to the power minus j i i omega i t bracket 
माइनस ओमेगा डि आई ए आई सैन डि आई टी प्लस ओमेगा डि आई बी आई कस ओमेगा डि आई टी ओमेगा डि आई इज नाथिंग बाट डैम नैचारे फ्रिकुएन्सि इन दि आई एथ मोड प्लस दि टाइम डेरिवेटिव अब दिस फांगशन सो एम आई ओमेगा कस ओमेगा टी प्लस थीटा वन सो दिस इज व्हाट उइ डिफारेंशिएटेड हियर दि टाइम फांगशन एंड देन स्पेस फांगशन दैट इज द फांगशन अब एक्स रिमेन्स एज ए कन्स्टेंट in the process of differentiation because we are differentiating with respect to time okay now our main interest will be to extract ai and bi from this summation term so that the response now can be completely written in terms of known parameter ai bi till now ai and bi are unknown parameters or unknown constant that we have to find out okay so applying the initial condition at t is equal to 0 we put t is equal to 0 here and we get root 2 ml and uh, ai plus mi sin theta i okay into sin i pi x by l because we are substituting t as 0 so we are getting this ai plus mi sin theta i into sin i pi x by l and in the velocity expression when i substitute t is equal to 0 we will get minus j i omega i ai plus omega d i b i plus m i omega cos theta i so ultimately we are getting this two equation of course the space function is involved in both the equation and summation is still there so now we have to extract or we have to solve for a i and b i so procedure is multiply both equation multiply both equations by say phi j x and we are associating a m phi j x so that the orthogonality condition can be easily captured so here m phi j x is nothing but why i am associating this m phi j x because the orthogonality condition can be directly applied that is phi j x phi i x dx equal to 0 if i is equal to not j okay so i multiply both sides of the equation both the equations two equations are there one is involving the displacement another is velocity and but initial conditions are such that both are zero we have taken both the conditions are zero but still ai and bi is not zero so uh, many students commit mistake that initial conditions are zero that means ai and bi is zero so that is not the case so you will get it here in a step by step procedure multiply both sides of the equation by m phi j x and then integrate with respect to x in the domain of the beam so if you carry out this integration then you will be able to capture the orthogonality integral and because of this the terms in the summation process will get cancelled when i is equal to not j and when i is equal to j only the terms will be existing because of this orthogonality condition and therefore we are multiplying both sides by m phi j x so multiply both sides by phi j x and integrate using orthogonality condition we are getting equation from first equation that is from displacement a i plus a m i sin theta i but displacement is zero so we are writing zero here but a i is not zero so a i is minus a m i sin theta i theta one so sin theta one theta i because i th mode we are taking so we are giving this theta i okay from the second equation that is from velocity 
second equation is this that is the velocity equation if you multiply it by m phi j x what is phi j x phi j x is nothing but root over 2 ml sin j pi x by l so you will get this integration m sin i pi x by l sin j pi x by l and these two constants are there will give you the result of orthogonality relationship so that is one when phi j is equal to not i and j and i are equal then the value of the integral is one whereas if this integration is carried out and you get that i is equal to j then it is only one but if you encounter these two different modes which are multiplied and uh, with m also coefficient m and by virtue of orthogonality condition that is zero if i is equal to not j i have repeatedly told you to remember this relationship and it is one when i and j are equal okay so based on that in the summation term only one one term will be there and therefore we are getting this so from this equation that is minus j i omega i a i plus b i omega d i plus capital m i capital omega cos theta i equal to zero from this equation we now get b i omega d i equal to j i omega i a i minus m i omega capital omega cos theta i so from that we can now get the final expression for b i so b i is equal to j i omega i into minus m i sin theta i divided by omega d i minus m i omega divided by small omega d i into cos theta i so once the constants of integrations are obtained then expression for the displacement can be written so y x t equal to root 2 by m l this is because of mass normalized mode shape uh, summation i is equal to 1 to infinity bracket e to the power minus j i i omega i t into a i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t bracket closed uh, uh, then uh, plus this steady state part m i into sin capital omega t plus theta i that is the time function into sin i pi x by l so once you know the a i and b i you can directly substitute this a i you can substitute this equation here and b i you can substitute here so all the quantities are known when the physical parameters of the beam and uh, the excitations are given okay now let us solve a problem of force vibration of fixed fixed beam now mode shape function in case of simply supported beam is very simple it is a sine function and then we can easily observe or easily calculate the integral sin uh, n pi x by l into sin m pi x by l or sin square n pi x by l this type of function we integration can be done very easily but when the boundary conditions are other than simply supported you have seen that mode shape function is a combination of hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic terms as well as trigonometrical function cos and sin so in that case squaring this mode shape function and then integrating is a laborious process but it can be done very easily with the help of tables of integral but here i will give a table which is found in almost all textbooks and uh, from this table you can pick up some particular integral that can be used to analyze the force vibration problem okay now here again we take the damped vibration damped uh, vibration of the beam and we use the model superposition technique to express the displacement y x t as the summation of this infinite number of terms of the 
product of mode shape function and generalized coordinate. So substituting this in this series, this series is which series? This is the series. This series, if I substitute this in this equation, and then we get this e i d to the power 4 phi i by d x to the power 4 eta i t plus c phi i x eta dot i, I t plus m phi i x eta i double dot t equal to f x. Now following the same procedure that you multiply this with the mode shape function phi j x and then uh, integrate it in the domain 0 to L use the orthogonality condition and uh, the free vibration equation that is uh, harmonic free vibration equation then we will be able to get this this procedure I have discussed in connection with earlier problem also but what is the difference here in this case I have not taken this uh, constant of mode shape as root 2 by ml root 2 by ml was obtained in case of this simply supported dim but here the mode shape function is a complicated one and this whatever function is there as a mode shape ai and this this ai is not known here in the earlier case ai is root 2 by ml so therefore we take this ai the high amplitude of the mode shape eigen function as 1 and we write this phi i x as simply the function that is obtained after solution of the boundary value problem in terms of cos hyperbolic sin hyperbolic etc so here is the difference with the earlier method where we use the mass normalized mode shape function here we are using the amplitude of the mode shape as 1. Now we will arrive this uh, uncoupled equation in a different way. So e i d to the power 4 phi i by d x to the power 4 eta i t plus c phi i x eta dot i t plus m phi i x eta i double dot t equal to f x t. And then integrating this in the limit 0 to L and using this condition free vibration condition that is e i d 4 phi i by d x to the power 4 equal to plus omega i square m phi i and c by m equal to 2 j i omega i and use this orthogonality condition but here the second integral you can see when i is equal to j in earlier case when we normalize this uh, mode shape function with respect to mass and therefore in that case in a simply supported case we got this coefficient of mode shape function that is amplitude as root 2 by ml but here it will not result this integration will not result in root 2 by ml so this will result in some other uh, parameter which let us say it is the capital mi and called as generalized mass So generalized mass now we have the definition is uh, 0 to L m phi i square x dx. In case of simply supported beam, generalized mass in any mode is constant and you can see this in that case it becomes m L by 2 for SS simply supported beam. However, for other types of boundary condition that is not the ml by 2. So therefore we take the help of some tables of integral that is found in the structural dynamics textbook. Okay. So based on that this is the generalized force so this integration will remain as it is fxt into uh, phi i x dx but here you see the generalized force qit now if I divide both sides of the equation by capital Mi then it will be eta i double dot t plus 2 j i i omega i eta dot i t plus omega i square eta i t equal to this is what is generalized mass. So this is nothing but this factor is nothing but Mi. 
So, after division of this equation by m i, we are now arriving at that equation. So, that means here I can write it q i by m i. So, x, uh, units are now matching because it is the acceleration units. Here also you are getting the force by mass is acceleration right hand side. So, let us take an example of fixed beam i is equal to moment of inertia of the cross section is 213 millimeter to the power 4 e is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square mass per unit length is 1.25 kg and the forcing function is uniformly distributed load but it is time varying so the forcing function is 200 sin 85 t so 85 is the capital omega you can say and 200 is the p that is the magnitude of the force so here we neglect the damping to illustrate the procedure we neglect the damping so eta i double dot t plus omega i square eta t equal to in the generalized force expression you are getting this as a time function so during the process of integration it can be taken as a constant so other space function will be integrated and here this m is taken as a constant so therefore m we can take outside so other integral is 0 to l phi i square x so here we can write this uh, p is the amplitude of the force divided by m m is there so we are taking it outside and i n what is i n i n is nothing but 0 to l phi i x dx divided by 0 to l phi i square x dx ok so that we are getting now i n is given for the fixed fixed beam and for other beam also it is given against the mode number so it is the first mode where the frequency parameter lambda l is 4.73 for fixed fixed beam and the mode shape function here you can see that a1 that coefficient taken as 1 and here the coefficient this alpha n coefficient here is alpha n ok so alpha n equal to it is the nth mode shape so here you can see these all are subscripted by n the nth mode shape so here you can see this nth mode shape so for first mode the lambda l1 will be 4.73 for second mode lambda l2 will be 7.85 and so on ok so this constant appearing in the mode shape function is alpha n it is 0 0.982502 for the fixed fixed beam uh, in the first mode and you can see this integration that we have given i n is phi n x dx divided by phi n square x dx 0 to l 0 to l is now evaluated and you can see then each mode it is different so therefore generalized mass also will be different in different modes and you can see the in the even number of modes this is becoming zero so these values are uh, noted from the table and we will use it for calculation ok so for the second mode this i n is 0 and for the fourth mode again i n is 0 we are interested in i n and alpha n ok this is also uh, to be used in the calculations ok so steady state response are now p i by n divided by m omega i square into 1 divided by 1 minus capital omega by omega i that is the frequency ratio square sin omega t so total response that is after taking the mode summation method is y x t equal to let us sum up up to fifth number of modes because in the table we have shown the fifth mode so i is equal to 1 and you can see that the contribution of i n that is the mode contribution in the even number of modes are 0 so therefore we are summing with only the odd number of terms 
so we can uh, write this at one three etc up to fifth mode that we are showing here and phi n x p i n divided by m omega I square into one divided by one minus omega by omega I square whole square sin omega t and if i take the bending moment because we are interested to know what will be the dynamic bending moment at the critical location at the fixed end the maximum bending moment is likely to occur at the the fixed end for uniformly distributed load and therefore we are getting ei del square y by del x square this is the bending moment expression is nothing but ei phi double prime zero p i n divided by m omega i square into one by one minus omega by omega i square sin omega i t so uh, phi x expressions are known to us it is cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x minus alpha n into sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x now at zero value at x is equal to zero you can easily see that phi n double prime zero that is required in the bending moment calculation is nothing but two lambda n square that you can see after putting x is equal to zero x is equal to zero is one fixed end and other fixed end is x is equal to l so m zero t is now two e i root over n one three five lambda n square into p i n m i omega i square into one divided by one minus omega by omega i square sin omega t after putting the numerical value we now get the first natural frequency as omega one one thirty radian per second substituting omega lambda one l is four seven three because uh, this lambda one by l will come so l is now here l, l square will be now under the root it will be l to the power 4 so you can see the first natural frequency 130 radian per second and we are illustrating the problem only with the first mode so the maximum bending moment at the fixed end after substituting the numerical value and you can see this ratio is very important this ratio is 0 0.6538 if this ratio is 1 then the bending moment any expression will be unbounded and this will be resonance condition and it is undamped so therefore unbounded response is obtained but any physical system in reality is damped so therefore even at the resonance the magnitude is not infinite it is bounded so we are now getting this m max after putting this value in ei is put in newton meter square and p is in newton m is kg per meter and omega is radian per meter and this is the ratio so after substituting all these values the dynamic bending moment at the fixed end is coming as 26.19 newton meter now let us see what will be the magnification factor if i see the fixed ended beam is subjected to static load of 200 newton per meter then we get the maximum bending moment at the fixed end that is x is equal to 0 is 200 into and beam length is taken as 1 so 1 square divided by 12 it is 16.67 newton meter so magnification factor in bending moment for such problem in this case is 1.57 okay now let us take another example a simply supported beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load say uniformly distributed load here we are denoting it by w q x is here w is a constant load so it is given as a constant load but this load is suddenly removed so we are interested to know what will happen how the beam will respond when the load is suddenly removed so derive the expression for the free vibration of the beam neglect damping so beam is set to vibrate after release of load at t is equal to 0 so therefore we can take the initial condition the fourth derivative of the displacement shape multiplied by ei 
is nothing but load W and velocity is taken as 0. So, the response of the beam after neglecting damping is written as y x t i is equal to 1 to infinity phi i x into a i cos omega i t plus b i sin omega i t. Now, same procedure is applied to obtain this a i and b i. So, time derivative that means velocity we are getting y dot equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity phi i x into a i omega i sin omega i t plus b i omega i cos omega i t at t is equal to 0 velocity is 0. So, therefore, we get directly b i is equal to 0 and hence uh, this is the mode shape function where we took the amplitude of the mode shape as 1. So, therefore, this load that uh, have to be related to the fourth derivative of mode shape function is nothing but e i d to the power 4 phi i x divided by d x to the power 4 equal to you can see this I uh, differentiated it 4 times. So, it becomes i pi by L uh, raised to the power 4 sin i pi x by L. Okay. So, this is nothing but our w. So, multiplying both sides by phi j x and then integrate. So, I multiplied this side by another mode shape function sin phi i x by L dx and integrated 0 to L. The result we are getting a i is equal to 4 w L to the power 4 divided by e i i to the power 5 pi to the power 5. And this integration you can see the integration of the sine function will be a cosine function with a minus sign and uh, you can see cos i pi when you substitute x as l, l upper limit minus cos 0 and this is existing only for odd number of terms. So, i is equal to 1 3 etcetera have to be taken in the summation of the uh, response. So, we are now finally getting y x t is equal to 4 w l to the power 4 divided by pi to the power 5 e i summation with odd number of terms into 1 divided by i to the power 5 sin i pi x by l cos omega i t. So, this is the response of the beam. Now, same problem let us illustrate instead of the uniformly distributed load. Now, let us take a beam where a concentrated load f is acting at a certain location. So, this location of the beam, uh, load is at a distance a from the left hand end. Now, at time is equal to 0, what will be the initial condition? Same type of problem that we have illustrated in example 3 is here, but here the concentrated load is suddenly removed and the beam is set to vibrate. So, our interest is to find this free vibration expression for the beam, but the initial condition have to be known. So, initial condition is um, at time t is equal to 0, we can get this y x 0 equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity a i phi i x and velocity y dot x 0 equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity omega i b i phi i x equal to 0. So, how this uh, the velocity is 0, so therefore it directly yields b i equal to 0, but now we have to get e i. Now, you can see if I draw the shear force distribution of the beam, beam is subjected to concentrated load at a certain distance a and the length of the beam is L. Now, reaction of the beam you can see it is F L minus A divided by L and here F A by L. So, the shear force distribution over the beam will be here like that. Here we will get positive shear whose value is F L minus A by L and here you will get negative shear whose value is F A by L. Okay. Now, shear force is related if V is the shear force at the cross section then it is related to this uh, third derivative of the displacement. So, E i d cube y by d x cube is equal to minus V and we put t is equal to 0 here. 
So, now the expression for y is uh, obtained here you can see then phi i x is also known to us as a sine function. So, after differentiation uh, 3 times we are getting this minus summation i is equal to 1 to 2, 1 to etcetera up to infinity 1 to dot dot then means summation has to be extended for infinite number of terms into i cube into pi cube divided by l cube. So, summation i is equal to 1 to etcetera i cube into pi cube divided by l cube cos i pi x by l a i equal to minus b. Now, to in order to extract i a i we multiply both sides by another function cos j pi x by l and then integrate. So, after integration the, the result that we want will be like that a i will be 2 l square divided by i cube pi cube e i and then integration 0 to l because this term will be uh, only one term will remain in the summation because as sin i pi x by l and sin j pi x by l forms a orthogonality relationship. Similarly, cos i pi x by l into cos j pi x by l also forms the orthogonality relationship. So, therefore, we get a i is equal to 2 l square divided by i cube pi cube e i integration 0 to l v cos i pi x by l dx. Now, we can see that shear force is f l minus a into l and it is valid for this region plus and then we are getting shear force in this region l. So, remembering this the integration have to be done in two parts. integration will be done in 2 parts 0 to a minus a to l so this is the integration so, a i now we have to obtain after integrating this expression ok. So, here is the shear force distribution that is shear force diagram over the beam length SFD shear force diagram. And this is the region of the shear force that we have told and integration have to be done in two parts two regions one is 0 to a and a to l. So, a to l and 0 to a. So, final result is a i equal to 2 l cube f divided by i to the power 4 pi to the power 4 e i sin i pi a by a, a, a sin i pi a by l. So, hence the expression for the deflection will be now y x t equal to 2 l cube f divided by pi to the power 4 e i summation i is equal to 1 to infinity 1 divided by i to the power 4 into sin i pi a by l sin i pi x by l cos omega i t. Now, if we are interested to find the response at x is equal to l by 2 at x is equal to l by 2 what is y uh, l by 2 t if first mode is considered. So, in that case you can easily see that L by 2 t this is L by 2 at the mid span twice L cube f pi to the power 4 e i and here i is equal to 1 and sin i is equal to 1 and i is equal to 1. So, this value should be there. 
pi a by l and sin i pi x by l so i is 1 and x is equal to l by 2 so sin pi by 2 cos omega i t so final result is 2 l cube f pi to the power 4 e i sin pi i by l into cos omega i t. So this is the response at the mid bean span if I consider only first mode i is equal to 1. Okay. Similarly you can consider other modes and you can see in denominator contains i to the power 4. So as you go in higher modes the magnitude will reduce gradually and therefore for displacement response only the first two three modes are sufficient okay let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture force vibration of Euler Bernoulli beam is formulated incorporating damping and any arbitrary forcing function the example of vibration of simply supported beam subjected to harmonic force at the center was given for the given initial conditions fixed fixed beam problem was illustrated with the concept of generalized mass which does not require mass normalized mode shape function calculation of magnification factor for the fixed and bending moment was shown then lastly two problems of simply supported beams initially loaded by uniformly distributed load and concentrated load were considered whose vibration was analyzed when the load is suddenly removed thank you very much Thank mm -hmm. you.